Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, for he is truly worthy to be praised. I want to welcome everyone to the Body of Christ Temple Bible message today. Uh, we're going to get into this word. We're going to dive into this word, man. That music is truly ministering to my spirit this, today. Uh, I'm so excited to bring forth this word, not for me, but for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we begin, we have to go to the throne of grace. Father God, we just thank you right now, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, O Lord God, for showing yourself in this place, God. We pray, O Lord God, that your word through your messenger, O Lord God, don't fall on deaf ears, God. We pray, O Lord God, that if the seed be planted, God, you will come along and you will water it, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you, O Lord God, for this opportunity that we have to fellowship amongst your people, God. Your word says where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst of your people, God. I believe that you are in the midst even of this message right now, God. To you we give all the honor, glory, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. All right. Amen. Amen. So look. Again, welcome. I, I, I'm excited. You know, anytime that that you can bring forth a message to be able to share a scripture, uh, share an encouraging word, I too am consumed by the message um, as the messenger. But but again, uh, that we've entitled this today, so I hope you have your ink pens ready. I, I'm going to be sharing a few scriptures with you today. And I, I'm not going to give it all. I, I'm challenging everyone to write down these scriptures and then in your own personal time, go and let God minister to you to give you a revelation of, of the message, give you a revelation of the scripture because, you know, God may be able to speak to me, but he may be able to, to give you the same scripture for a different reason, for a different purpose in a different season. So again, the, the title today is A Polished Penny. So I want you to take a moment, look around your house, dig in your pockets, dig in your purse, look for a penny. I don't care what the penny looks like. I don't care what the year of the penny. I don't even care who's on the penny. Just get yourself a penny, lay it right next to you, hold it in your hand, lay it into your Bible next to you, whatever you have, and then we'll bring about an understanding of why I asked you to get to that penny. So do we have our penny? Okay, if you don't have a penny, here you go. All right? So look, a couple of scriptures of focus that I'm going to come from is 1 first, first John 1 through 9 and Psalms 51 and 10. I'm going to give you those scriptures again. 1 John 1 through 9 and Psalms 51 and 10. And I'll begin at 1 John 1 through 9 and it reads as such. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness and again if we confess our sins mm -hmm. he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all righteousness now think about what i just said he capital h e is faithful and righteousness to forgive us of our sin no one else can forgive you of these sins except for the one Amen. The one who, who birthed you into this life, the one who will call you home, the one who has the ability to empower you, forgive you, love on you, and let you know who you are in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. Now, then in Psalms 51 and 10, it says, create in me a clean heart, mm -hmm. O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Anybody out there that, that's had heart trouble before, um, hmm. if your heart has been darkened about what has taken place in your life, but oh God, hmm. renew a steadfast spirit in me. So here's the thing. He cleansed your heart, but when your heart get cleansed, we got to keep it clean. Amen. So in you, he has to create a steadfast spirit, that spirit of God that lives in you, that is that constant at war against the enemy. In other words, your spirit is in battle with your flesh. Mm. Oh my. So as I go into it, so let's reflect a little bit. You can be corrupt if you are, are, are divided amongst yourselves. See, the word yourselves, it tells you when people hear this word yourselves, meaning more than one, it means you, somebody else, some in your group, there's a division. Even in churches, we begin to see there's a hundred people, but they are all divided. Come on. And then when we look at a church, other churches are also divided from other churches. But I'm not talking about the division of all these people. I'm talking about the three 
letter word that starts off the word yourselves, which is Y-O-U, it is you. Mm. You are divided amongst yourselves. See, we begin to divide yeah. against the spirit. We divide the heart. We separate ourselves from God because we begin to get into these sinful acts, these sinful thoughts. Oh, my goodness. I didn't mean to start preaching. I want to teach you something here. Uh -huh. So hold on. Good word. So over time, we can add layers upon layers upon layers, just like a penny. Hold on. Stay with me now. A penny that has been dropped out of somebody's pocket, thrown away, so on and so forth, and it begins to be lost amongst the field. How many people who are watching online have been looking outside of their car and pulling in the parking lot and they see a penny laying on the ground and we pick up the penny. It doesn't have the characteristics of a penny, but we've identified that it's a coin. Amen? Amen. So it has layers upon layers upon layers of everything that is on it. It is lost in the field. Now, it has been there for years, and on these years, all these layers upon layers upon layers, the appearance of this once shiny penny, this polished penny, it doesn't appear to be shiny anymore. Hmm. And it appears to take a characteristic of it was a brown shiny penny, then it became a greenish color penny, and then it became black. Hmm. Okay, hold on right there. I said it appears to be black. And then one day somebody like you or me or someone comes along and finds that penny. Come on. Oh my, my Come spirit on. is getting so turned up in this message. Thank God for the message. Bring the word. They take it home and they begin a process of pulling back the years and uh, pulling back the years of this weathered coin. It begins to start to strip this thing down. So for you and I, what this penny looks like, it starts to begin to look like you. Mm, uh -oh. oh my, uh -oh. so in this process it's been picked up, it's been uh, tender head carried and uh, it's, it's begin to be stripped away, um, it begins to strip away the years that you've been beat on, um, mm. the years that you've been uh, stepped on, uh, the years that you've been kicked on, and, and yes, even the years that you have been forgotten. Come on. See, we begin to be like that penny. We have been beaten and weathered over the years and then we once had this this shiny penny heart mm -hmm. and then the heart because we've been beaten by society we've been beaten by man we've been beaten by the enemy we had just been beaten upon beaten upon beaten mm -hmm. so bad that we are not this shiny penny anymore we are black because we're in a pit we're in a dark place come on now, this penny has lost its light. This penny has lost its luster. The penny has even lost its value. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything about it anymore. Hallelujah. See, our sins may have a shine to it for a moment, but over time, uh, it begins to fade into the darkness just like that lost penny. Mm. Oh, my. So in our lives, we have been introduced, if you will, to others that once also appeared to be a shiny penny. But it appears to be black as night and it begins to fade into this thing that I call the nothingness of life. And serving the master who only knows the hellfire. This is the enemy and to the enemy the black penny looks real good. Oh my. In the Bible we begin to see Black pennies that were in the Bible that was turned into a new thing. Okay. Remember the scriptures, children, men and women of God. Remember in the book of Genesis in uh, 50 and 20, that's Genesis 15 and 20. I'm going to have to keep going. How Joseph began to comfort his brothers, you know, the ones who wanted to kill him out of jealousy and spite. The ones who sold him off as dead. But he begins to comfort her and he says this starting in verse 19. Do not be afraid, for I am in the presence of God. In other words, he says, I am in God's place right now. And in verse 20, focus, as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve my people alive. And then in 21, it says, so therefore be not afraid, for I for provide for you your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. How is it that Joseph was hated upon by his own by like his own blood, his own kinfeet so bad that they wanted to kill him? 
So his brothers began to take on the characteristics of a once shiny penny, had the gleam in the father's eye, but then they begin to fade into the nothingness. They begin to fade like this penny and turn black. In other words, their heart turned black. Oh my. So in this act, they begin to what we call premeditation. See how we can get rid of him. See how we can get him out of the picture so our father can love on us and, 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 and confide in us and give us what we're worth. So no, in God's plan, if this did not happen, 